everybody, it's Retro Gaming now, and we are back with Real Mist Masterpiece Edition. So we have freed Atris, and he has destroyed the Brothers' books. So he's left us with the ability to roam the ages of Mist again, and we found this book on the floor, and it looks like he left here. So let's go ahead and read it. Rhyme, I have named it, a desolate age with a beauty that's quite different than I expected or imagined. The intricate feathers of ice that fall from the sky are awe-inspiring. I feel as though I could sit and watch them for hours. And though it is cold here like I've never experienced before, never experienced before, that's bad grammar actually, I find myself enjoying the change of temperature for as unlike any other place that I have seen. Perhaps the oddest thing is the silence. Although the wind blows on occasion, when it ceases there is a suffocating silence that falls in this place, broken only by the distant cries of unseen treasures. I have visited three times and I am now sure this age will provide the environment I need. I believe the cold temperature is necessary for obtaining the correct resonance. Examining the structure of the books is ever more perplexing. I'm driven onward by my need to understand. The great tree of possibilities can never be fully grasped, but I must at least try to find one particular branch. On the subject of enlightenment, I would also like to find the cause of the mysterious lights that shine in the darkness here. Though I never assumed that I would be able to build especially fast here, the speed at which I'm progressing is somewhat disappointing. I do think I'll bring Sirius and Akinaut here, as well as some of the machinery from the Selenetic. So this is obviously before, this is all obviously well in the past. Akinar chose to stay with Catherine, but Sirius was rather excited to come. He spent the last few days here with me, helping me with the beginning phases of construction. He too seems to enjoy the ice and cold weather. He's intrigued by the crystals that we have brought with us. He has a big he has been a big help as of others, and I hope to be able to begin my experiments here soon. Tonight Sirius and I found a wondrous spot to view the lights, and although it seems they've decided to hide from us. After sitting in the cold winds for over two hours, we saw nothing. It was rather disappointing. Sirius will turn to mist to tomorrow. He has been a tremendous aid to me, and I'm thankful for his willingness to help. The hard part of the construction is over, and I've, although I've decided after tonight that I would like to add some sort of observation post, I won't be finished as soon as I'd hoped, though I'm fairly certain it will be worth a delay in the long run. I've decided to take a break from the construction now that the tunnel is almost complete, and I've been able to set up a temporary space where the crystals will not be stimulated. I'm quite convinced that with the right diffraction resonance, certain properties of the ink can be simulated. Catherine still finds it absurd and thinks I'm crazy to assume I'll be able to view ages with the stones, but her unusual pessimism has not convinced me to stop trying. I came too close to success on Everdunes. We've seen that heard of that name before. I'm fairly certain that now the temperature indeed does have an effect on the crystals, but I've realized that the temperature alone is not enough. The cold dampens some of the sympathetic harmonics, but a more active suppressor is necessary. I've acquired some geodes with a pure protected crystalline interior. This slice of the geodes below each crystal provide a stabilizing effect and even amplify the clean frequency slightly. After quite a bit of experimentation with the shapes and colors, I was able to capture a blurry image with a book. Through, though the link would never work, there is clearly an age on the other side. I can hardly wait to return and tell Catherine. I feel like I should finish the shaft to my observation post while I have the machinery here, perhaps, perhaps tomorrow morning. The lights were beautiful again last night. They had not shown themselves for so long I had almost forgotten their beauty. I still must find their cause. I'm feeling rather overwhelmed with what remains to be done. The crystals have not been perfected, the shaft is not finished, nor the observation post, nor even the lab. I have not seen Catherine for some time, and I long to spend more time with Akinar and Sirius. Besides all of that, there are far, far away in the back of my mind the thoughts of the people in our lost city. I dreamt again of them last night. So this here, this picture, I don't remember uh, specifically what it's called. It's very famous. It's from Dunny, which is the place where Atris is. And there are some other mist games that delve a lot deeper into this. But um, I'll put it on the... I'll probably put an annotation. I've only seen the city in its worst condition and still its beauty overwhelm me. Even now I visualize how majestic it must have been before the destruction caused by Viovis and Agaris, And it amazes me and saddens me. I'm fairly certain that Denis is not dead as my father believed. I'm convinced that there must be someone who managed to escape the destruction and even now continue to survive in separate ages. Within me is an urging to take the chance and return to Dunny to find the survivors and properly rebuild our city. However, I can do nothing until I'm certain of the fate of my father. If my plan failed, I missed a single book when attempting to trap him on Riven, then he has been free all along. If that is true, then all that stands between him and the ages I have na now written is the link from Dunny to Mist. As much as I wish to return to Dunny, without knowing the state of my father, I cannot risk re-establishing that link. I must observe my father without re-establishing that link. It has been take taken several years, and there have been many dead ends, but I have partially succeeded. 
Now that I've managed to view another age using the crystals, it's only a matter of time until I view Riven. At least I hope. Catherine will have her ideas about all these things, and I miss her greatly. I return to Rhyme later when my mind is clear. So this brings up a lot of plot elements from future games, games that we have not played yet, such as Riven, and it also mentions some things from Uru. And I'm not going to delve too deeply into that because you might want to play the second game. I really do recommend you play it. So here we've got a picture where if we hit the... we can flip this around with the number 40 and hit the back button in 2735. So let's head on back there and see what we can do with that. Sorry. I can't jump there. Whoa. Set it to 40. And hit the back button. That didn't seem to do anything, so maybe I've got to set it to 40 and hit it when it beeps. Maybe that's what I gotta do. Yeah, that high beep right there. Then hit the back. It doesn't want to work either, so let's try this again. Forget specifically how you do this. Uh, maybe you gotta hit the first. Maybe you've gotta hit this one first. Then hit the back one. There we go. So here we've got the diagram of the pathway to the rocket ship, if we hit this, it rotates and we can hear something happening upstairs. So let's go check that out real quick. <clears throat> Just up the path. There's some birds up there. So we saw this rotating here, and yes indeed, it has rotated. So we've got a new passageway to go to. Alright, so now we've got this thing, and I believe the code was 2735. Whoops. And there goes that. So we must have activated something. And if we follow our path here, you can tell we are actually in that room directly beneath the library. So if we head over to the library, we've got another book. And this here is the book to rhyme, so let's head on through. So just like that, here we are in the rhyme age. And it is indeed cold and dark. We've got the wind sort of. And a lot of snow and cold water. So an interesting thing to point out is the topographical test we had the imagers actually this island here. And so that's why we use this island to get into the Rhyme Age. So let's go walk around. We've got a hut here. We'll check that out in a minute. Now here we've got some sort of poles with lightning going back and forth between them. I wonder if this has something to do with the crystals that Atris was talking about. Not sure where the light is coming from on these. Um, let's go inside the hut. The door is open, obviously. Not good. And it is very cold. Here we've got, hopefully, a miss book. Yep. Furnace. Doesn't do anything. And a door which is shut. Here we've got a picture of some crystals or geodes. Some dunny writing up there. Well, since we're stuck in, it, looks, it sounds like the door is iced shut. Um, let's go ahead and see if we can figure out how to turn the furnace on. So I've got something over here. It's like it's pumping things out. That was a weird sound. Back here we've got the gas. So let's turn the gas on. Maybe 
this will work. There we go. And you can hear the ice is starting to melt, it's starting to become less white. Slowly. Still can't open the door. Can actually see the patterns on the wall. And there we go. Into the cavern. Very dusty. Nah, or foggy, not dust necessarily. And we have an elevator. Can we go down? Nope, so let's head on up. And here we've got, we can look out over this. We've got this lever, let's see what that does. So you can see it activates these things here, these electrical things, and creates an aurora. And this lever here adjusts a color, so if we do this, you get a blue aurora. It's pretty cool. Is it useful? Not at all, but it's still a pretty cool thing to play around with. Of course, honestly, that's how this whole age sort of is. Nothing useful, but kind of cool. Right, let's see what else we can do. Um, got a button here. And that rotates the whole thing. We have definitely seen this before. And we've got a desk, so we've got a drawer which doesn't have anything. That is quite disappointing. A floating rock. Seems like something, um... Sirius would have. A pen. This sort of thing. I can't tell if this is a clock, maybe. And a book. Right, this one's not too, sh not too long, so I'll go ahead and read it. Before spending any more time with my experiments, I've decided that I must finish construction. I've brought both Sirius and Akinar this time. The shaft is almost finished in the observation point. Observation post. Both boys prefer it inside where it is warm, protected from the cold. Akinar sits in the observation post for hours, and Sirius is consumed with the crystals and glimpses of the age as they, we are able to see. Neither of them shows any real desire to leave. I cannot remember the last time my son spent so much time with me in the age. After much more experimenting with the shapes of the crystals, we were able to get a nearly perfect view of an age inside of the book. So we got a set of crystals here, so let's go ahead and take a, write those down in case they'll be useful later. Because these crystals are horrible, honestly. You'll see why in a minute. Sirius wanted to link immediately, not understanding that the link was only visual. Without the ink, the crystals do not bind onto particular age. Because of this, the crystals have an interesting side effect. It's possible to change the crystals and watch the age change. While in reality we are seeing a vast number of distinct, though similar ages, displaying the current age defined by the crystals, it appears as though we are changing the original age. Next to the lights, my sons seem to be much more interested in the lights of the night sky right now. Their only inter interest in the crystal seems to be whether or not we can view Channelwood or Stone Ship. Two ages I have not seen in, in a long while. Not seen, that's another typo. It is possible to view the ages, although the time it would take to find the correct combination would be prohibitive. I do not consider my task with the crystals complete, but I would rather keep Sirius and Akinar excited here, so we move on to the lights. I think it is better to keep Riven from them, j so it is just as well that we move on to something else. I will view that place later. The lights are curious. Although I originally thought the effect to be an organic one, I now believe it is an electromagnetic in origin. I think the effect could be triggered somehow. It's something we'll have to try, and if Sirius and Akinar have their way, it will be soon. I have never seen either of them so interested in my experiments, and I do not want to dampen their enthusiasm. It seems they have forgotten about the crystals now. I'm not sure if either of my sons was expecting the amount of work it would take. It turned out to be a challenge working above the cold waters where the wind cuts through the clothing and skin like a sharp knife. Still, even amidst the dark cold, they are driven to complete the task. It is a sight of them that I have not seen before. Another hard day, but we have erected the first of the three towers. I am too tired to write tonight. It has been a week. The second and third towers are up. We only need to connect the power. I am exhausted, and as are Sirius and Akinar. However, they have no intention of quitting, and that drives me. The towers are finished, as is the power to each of them. Power will be conducted directly through the sal saline sea, alleviating the need for stringing wires and enabling us to locate the towers in a comfortable distance away. Most of the remaining work can be accomplished inside, for which I am grateful. I am tired of the cold. I look forward to the warm beaches of Mist Island. Perhaps we all deserve a break. We 
spent a day with Catherine before returning. We are here only a minute before we be again began to experiment with the towers and the electromagnetic discharges. We were able to create an arc for the first time between the two towers. Its reflection in the cold waters was magnificent. We are close now. Tomorrow, after adjusting the voltage, we will know just how close. The beauty is awe-inspiring. At our command, multicolored waves of light dance across the dark sky. Brilliant flashes of white lightning that make the display even more amazing precede them. The boys are convinced they will be able to bring their mother here, and though usually refu she usually refuses to use the books, I'm convinced that she will come, at least I hope. Here's another drawing of that uh, monument. It's in Dunia. I wish I could remember what it's called. As for me, I must return to Mist or some other warm place. There's more to be accomplished here, but I th long for the sun and will spend some time under its glow before returning. Catherine had to come after I told her of my intentions how to use the crystals to view Riven. She's not consumed with the setup of the geodes and the crystals and encourages me daily as I try to uncover the combination that will allow me to view of that age. Sears Nakanar did not come this time. I must return to Everdunes. I believe that a few of the crystals I left in Everdunes may help me here. Catherine has returned home for now, but she'll meet me on Mist Island in three days. I think I'll be ready by then. Everdunes again. Unfortunately, Everdunes is never actually mentioned again. So we never do figure out what Everdunes was or is. Let's try and find our crystals. If we head down, we'll be flipped. And a new location. Let's look over here first. We've got another one of these time sort of things. A little light. Almost a fire marble. Which I wouldn't expect anyone to know what that is. More of these sort of crystals in here. And, uh, it is real. The work of your worlds, the touch of my dreams. I've left, dream le left my dream for you. I'm only yours, Catherine. So she's left us a combination, too. Which we are going to write down really quick, also. Alright. And let's go ahead and look at this. Got some little sleeping quarters. A book which we can't open. Ugh, that is so frustrating. Alright. Let's bow this thing up. So it's looking at the book. And we want to enter crystals, so... I'm going to go ahead and enter the one I have. So we need this one, and we need to be red. So how do you change the color? Hold down for a while, that's what you do. See if I can get it on the first try. These, this um puzzle can be very difficult because some of the crystals look really similar. But maybe I can get it. Once again, just trust me on this one. All right, that's good. Three spikes now. That one. Just blue, light blue. There we go. I think this is the correct one. Oh, it's had to be done. Let's restart. There we go. And the last one, I like to think that's the bunny ears one. We'll see why, because it kind of looks like bunny ears to me. And this is one that gets confused a lot. So we'll see if it's right. And it's light purple, it looks like. It's that color. The button, and we got it wrong, so this one might be wrong. Let's see if there's a different one. It's not that. That's the correct one. There we go. <laughs> and that is wrong as well. So let's see if this one has a different one. Maybe I'll, I'll try changing the color. Because uh, the thing is, this puzzle is very difficult to get right, honestly. And I might actually have to look up what it looks like, really, as opposed to the drawing. Let's try dark purple. There we go. And you can see an image. Some palm trees. And a little lagoon sort of looking thing. Now if you've ever played another... If you've ever played Riven, this should be painfully obvious as to what it is. And without... It's not going to spoil anything if I tell you, but this is actually the Sunner Lagoon. So Riven is more of a jungle jungle age, or 
more tropical, and so this is a lagoon where there's like these animals that fly down. This rock actually in the middle is special, and um, I really don't want to say why right now, in case I ever play Riven. But uh, there you go. That is what Rhyme has. I know it's not not the best age, but um, oh, you have a flashlight. We'd have that. So. Yeah, I don't know. Not the most climactic ending to the mist, but I mean, it's a cool little thing. I think the music's pretty cool. So, uh, this is Riven here. Alright, this has been Retro Gaming Now, and we've been I've been playing Real Mist Masterpiece Edition, and this is all there is to it. So, um, as always, if you enjoy, rate, comment, subscribe. Love reading your comments, and, uh, it's pretty fun. I, I did enjoy this this remake. Um, if you've never played Mist, I think you should play this version. But I do think the original version. There's there's so many versions of Mist. There's Mist, Mist Masterpiece, Real Mist, Real Mist Masterpiece. So honestly, they're all the same thing. Unless you're like a hardcore fan, I don't think you necessarily have to pick this one if you up if you got Real Mist. It doesn't really add anything. But you know, looks a little bit nicer. Not as nice as I would have hoped, though. But, um, Abduction is coming up in a couple of years, so I'm really looking forward to that. I pledged on Kickstarter. So, um, yeah, it's been Real Miss Masterpiece Edition. And, um, I'll see you on my next Let's Play. Alright, thank you guys.